Dear colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. It's a pleasure to be with you here and uh, talk about co-creating sustainable uh, innovations or innovations for sustainable development. Over my whole academic career, I have been working with uh, sustainability questions relating to business and consumption. It has been a wonderful journey because in the beginning, um, it was hardly an understood topic. Uh, language was missing and uh, business people as well as business scholars would be thinking that uh, sustainability or corporate responsibility is uh, very marginal uh, and, and probably a totally uh, almost uh, unexisting question. Over the past years, uh, my interest has uh, directed more and more towards uh, the question and potential of uh, what innovations could do in order to simultaneously solve ecological sustainability problems as well as poverty and inequality problems. And not only in the Finnish or developed countries context, but, but also in the emerging uh, low income settings. And uh, while I have been uh, doing that research work on innovations, it has also uh, involved uh, studying co-creation. My presentation today uh, starts with some introductory words and uh, thereafter I will uh, narrow down to looking at uh, frugal and reverse innovations as one path uh, towards sustainable, uh, uh, more sustainable futures. And after that I will look at uh, paradoxes of these uh, co-creative efforts and, uh, and how to cope with such paradoxes. In order first to motivate you a little bit for this uh, coming 20 minutes, uh, let me mention a few facts. Um, in this room, we all know uh, that uh, our climate is warming. We may also remember that uh, according to the latest forecast of the International uh, Panel for <coughs> Climate Change, um, the, even if we would stop uh, uh, tram or we would dramatically cut uh, CO2 emissions uh, from now on, our temperatures would still rise on average by 2% by the end of this very decade. And the same uh, forecast tells that by the end of the century, the temperatures on average will probably rise about uh, 5%. What this means is uh, floods somewhere, droughts in other places, it means uh, rising sea levels, it means uh, loss of habitats for people and so on. Uh, what we also have heard of uh, is uh, depletion of natural resources that is uh, occurring as a result of uh, overconsumption and industrial production. We face loss of biodiversity, which, uh, which means that we are losing species and, uh, and uh, gene population uh, amongst the, uh, or, or variety among the species, and this risks uh, collapses of uh, ecosystems. If I give a few examples, which I don't know uh, of if you've thought of, that uh, fish in fisheries today is 90% less than it was at the onset of industrial fishing. Or if we compare the amount of terrestrial species uh, to the year of uh, 1970, and uh, between that and today, we've lost 40% uh, of, uh, of, of the population of uh, terrestrial species. Then moving on uh, or over to the uh, poverty and inequality side, just two facts. Uh, 85 people own as much as the lowest uh, earning uh, half of the population. And if we look at the, the bottom half, the 3.5 billion people, how much do they own? They own less than 1% of the global assets. <laughs> and that's a polarizing trend. It's not, things are not becoming uh, more equal if, uh, if we work as we do at the moment. So those are some things that, uh, that are motivating me toward uh, studying uh, innovations for sustainability. And uh, when we hear the word innovations, we may get lots of feelings and sometimes irritation. And, and we may think that, uh, that innovations are something that are rocket science. From my perspective, they are not necessarily rocket science. Sometimes they are relatively mundane changes in products, services, business models, and institutions surrounding them.
Let me now narrow down um, to um, frugal and reverse innovations. I spoke about uh, ecological uh, uh, problems and uh, income and inequality problems earlier on. While I list those problems and challenges, they are not directly usually uh, experienced by people as, as, as such challenges, but rather uh, what we experience is unemployment, uh, lack of food, lack of housing, uh, lack of education, lack of opportunities, or, or, or uh, uh, losing, uh, uh, losses of crops, and so on. Various types of resource uh, scarcities. And those very resource scarcities suggest the frugal uh, innovation idea can actually be sources of, uh, of, of innovation. So scarcities of material and energy and incomes may actually uh, help in creating solutions that are less resource intensive, that are more affordable, more easy to use, and perhaps even more technologically uh, advanced than their uh, than the existing alternatives. I give you two examples. Uh, first, a need-based uh, uh, ideated innovation, which is by a Kenyan enterprise called uh, Craft Skills. These are windmills which are uh, using uh, discarded motorbike engines as, uh, as the engine and, of, the, of the windmill, and the uh, wings are made of cheap but durable uh, glass fiber. They are sold locally in, uh, in East Africa. Then another type of example coming from uh, GE, General Electric, which is a multinational uh, corporation. Uh, Lullaby is an infant warmer which was developed for, uh, uh, for India, where they wouldn't uh, afford, uh, except for in elite hospitals, the existing infant warmers. Lullaby was uh, launched there in 2009. Now it's sold in, uh, to over uh, 80 countries, including the US, including uh, some wealthy uh, European countries. It costs a fraction of, uh, of its uh, um, competitors and, uh, and it does the same, uh, same job as the other ones. Lullaby is an example of a reverse innovation. It was created in the low-income emerging market context, but it migrated to the developed countries and is taking market share from, uh, from the more expensive options. Now I will, uh, over the uh, latter part of my presentation, focus on uh, some of the uh, lessons that, uh, that we have learned when studying uh, frugal and reverse innovations not only those done by others, but, uh, but also uh, through processes that we have participated uh, with my uh, uh, research group uh, ourselves. Uh, the first, uh, first set of, uh, uh, of evidence that I use here uh, is coming from a study that we did on uh, ABB and Nokia Siemens networks. For ABB, the innovation was a mini hydro solution, which was intended for uh, addressing energy poverty in uh, uh, countries uh, like those in, uh, in, in Africa, where which, some of which have uh, free-falling water, uh, where you could use mini-hydro, but you would uh, badly damage uh, the nature if you uh, would use large-scale uh, dams. And the Nokia Siemens Networks uh, solution is uh, called Village Connection, and it's an uh, inexpensive, uh, uh, network which makes it possible for the operators also to go to uh, areas where legacy networks wouldn't uh, make economic sense. Then another example is uh, a program, uh, an innovation and training program for companies called We Economy Start, headed by World Vision Finland. World Vision is a sponsor child organization that uh, wants to develop its uh, charity-based uh, collaboration with companies towards uh, more innovative, uh, co-creative approaches. And this example is one where we have also been uh, partnering with World Vision, uh, giving uh, expertise from the area. It's uh, Indian and Sri Lankan uh, uh, World Vision counterparts have been uh, participating and we've also had uh, uh, FinPro with us. And, uh, and what we've offered is a innovation program for, inclusive innovation program for, for Finnish companies. And, uh, and in the first round we had uh, 
uh, four, of, uh, four companies uh, with us. Then the final uh, relatively recently started ongoing uh, program is, uh, is our research and innovation um, project called Co-Creating Frugal and Reverse Innovations for Complex Global Systems. It's funded from, uh, from TECES uh, Strategic uh, Opening um, Funding and it is actually a cross-disciplinary project uh, here at Aalto. It's uh, led by us at the business school. We have designers, architects, we have water and development uh, researchers and we also have uh, the renewable uh, energies unit with us. And what we believe is that, uh, it's, that Finnish companies have knowledge and, and uh, capabilities that would be valuable in the low income uh, emerging markets. But uh, we also know that these uh, competencies and capabilities will only realize their value if they are combined with, uh, with uh, the local uh, networks and, and local knowledge. So what, uh, what we are trying to do there is to facilitate uh, the entry and, and learning of, uh, of Finnish companies in the emerging uh, markets. And at the, uh, in the first phase, we are uh, working through Alto platforms in uh, uh, Tanzania, in Africa, in Mexico, and we are also doing some, uh, some more uh, experimental uh, research in, uh, in India. So, uh, uh, grand it sounds, um, doesn't it? And um, next I want to turn the talk a little bit to look at the, um, the paradoxes that, uh, that co-creation uh, brings with it. Uh, you, it's almost impossible uh, to come up with a frugal and reverse innovation that, that would uh, scale up to any reasonable extent without co-creation. You, you need multiple partners. And, and also you, uh, you would need that these partners operate at a certain uh, equal basis, otherwise it's a hierarchy and then we are not speaking about uh, co-creation but about something else. And uh, so basically what there should be is a shared vision, at least uh, to an extent shared vision, a shared process. But what happens is that you obviously have organizations uh, with multiple organizational logics uh, involved, which are uh, often in uh, contradiction, in, at least in partial contradiction uh, or non-aligned uh, with each other. This was uh, uh, very obvious, for instance, in the We Economy Start program, where at the abstract level, everybody in the beginning agreed that we try to head for dual purpose, uh, dual goal business models, which would simultaneously uh, alleviate some poverty problem, for instance, in the area of uh, energy or food or housing and, uh, or, or sanitation, but, uh, and, and also uh, do that so that it's profitable for the, uh, for the part participating entities. But what, what happens when you get down to concrete levels was actually that uh, the NGO uh, wanted to make sure that uh, its extremely poor communities it works with would get uh, the, the benefits quite directly. And the companies that were participating, or uh, three of the four, noticed quite soon that they actually would have to target the not the extremely poor, but the next level, still low income uh, segments, but but, but not the extremely poor ones. And, and uh, that, was, uh, that was one of the uh, situations. Another thing, and I think that this goes also beyond our study, is that co-creating, uh, um, co-creation is wanted by many in today's society. But then again, it's owned by nobody. And what this means is that uh, shared responsibility may become nobody's responsibility. <coughs> And uh, there is this question of uh, who pays the costs and who, uh, who gets the credits. So let us look uh, for the next uh, minute for, the, uh, for coping strategies or, or tactics <coughs> within those somewhat paradoxical situations. <coughs> First I look at the... <coughs> sorry. First, I look at the uh, internal organizational situation in such settings where the co-creators might not have uh, full support uh, from their own organization. 
to do that uh, co-creation. Usually organizations have relatively narrow uh, goal maximization. Uh, uh, they have subunit based incentive structures and uh, they tend to be avoiding uncertainty. And, and these uh, factors may turn into obstacles for uh, uh, co-creation who wants uh, direct benefits at a relatively <coughs> short term. What do, what do the co-creating uh, innovators uh, do if they are very uh, engaged? Uh, they, they try to uh, uh, bypass and, and overcome these obstacles, for instance, uh, by using uh, considerable amounts of their free time, using their free, um, sorry, their private life roles uh, and networks and, and other types of uh, resources in order to uh, persuade the co-creative Goals. Here is one uh, citation from the Nokia Siemens uh, network situation uh, from a uh, situation where, uh, where um, the Nokia Ventures unit had decided that, uh, that the development for, uh, for village connection would have to, would have to finish. Uh, another uh, another uh, thing which uh, may take place is entrepreneurship, which, which happens at situations when, uh, when um, bosses uh, explicitly tell that, uh, that you can't uh, continue with, uh, with the uh, co-creation of innovation. So working underground, working against uh, orders of the bosses and so on can be the, some of the tactics. Then let, let's look at the other uh, aspect, the, the situation of co-creation, where I said that you might have the multiple uh, uh, logics operating while you should have the, the same goal. What helps there? Um, in general, um, what, what happens here is that co-creators persuade for something that is unknown. For us who are scientists in this room, we know that this is quite typical. Many of us are persuading uh, something that, uh, that is uh, unknown. So Nothing new there, uh, you may think. But in multi-stakeholder, frugal and reverse co-creative situations, you actually work beyond your discipline. You actually work beyond academia or business works beyond uh, uh, business and so on. And you also work uh, with uh, more than one uh, uh, national uh, culture. So. Uh, what happens there is that the possibilities of workable solutions uh, get amplified and, and the possibilities of your innovations to get created and to stick become bigger. But also uh, this setting amplifies the question of how do we structure the unknown so that we are able to uh, act in it. And here I have picked uh, a few things which, uh, which, 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 help, uh, which help there. One is uh, wise interaction that uh, individuals recognize the limits of their knowledge uh, and are willing to listen to others. That, that sounds uh, easy. Sometimes it's very, very difficult and often you need uh, different types of uh, facilitating mechanisms there, such as appreciative communication practices. Another thing is uh, situational uh, engagement individuals contributing uh, purposefully to collective sense-making, articulating actively their emerging understandings, responding immediately to, uh, to other people's uh, comments and concerns, and, and uh, they would need to uh, seek earnestly to integrate their views into uh, congruent understandings. What, what we can notice in the, uh, in the actual situations uh, often when, uh, when we've been doing uh, uh, work with the studies that, uh, that I just explained, is that uh, at the times where there start being conflicting views, people may just kind of, you know, a little bit withdraw from the situation in, in, in the fear of, uh, of creating the, the conflict. And, and this situational engagement uh, suggests something very different. Another thing is building uh, on common identities. This helps uh, individuals to relate to the others, across uh, organ organizational uh, boundaries. So for instance, uh, uh, an NGO uh, professional can, uh, can uh, build uh, on the common identity of a hardworking professional at a certain uh, phase of uh, his or her uh, career. And this, uh, this is something that, that we have uh, that we've, uh, seen as well. 
Now let me conclude uh, by saying that um, we are used to thinking that um, big uh, uh, questions such as major sustainability challenges are best left for the, for the political process. But our social systems have become so complex that the political alone no longer suff suffices to, uh, to uh, address the problems to governing and, and implementing the uh, global solutions. Rather, the answers are <coughs> increasingly sought and create, sought from and created in the bottom-up uh, processes and also at the grassroots levels. But not only at the grassroots levels, but, but, the, but the big challenge, as I see it, and the big opportunity is that you have, you have multiple levels, you have people uh, who recognize the big picture, but who are also able to work uh, in their own uh, contexts with, uh, with concrete actions. Thank you for your attention.